So like maybe five years later, I got an opportunity to play inside San Quentin prison as a volunteer with Red and Roses Presents for the day of peace. So I grabbed Dave to be my drummer. So, and I'm coming back with Dave and Francesco Lee, a producer, and we're driving through the marina in San Francisco, the marina district. And I say, oh, I used to work at that liquor store right there. And Dave, my drummer says, me too. <laughs> and then it went off in my head. He had worked in the deli like in 1990. And I were, so we were like, whoa. Listen to the vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very happy to welcome Mr. Donovan Plant here. He's a musician and lead guy of Donovan Plant and the Leafs. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and and so I got to listen to a re-song EP that you put out. So before we get into that conversation, though, tell us a little bit more about you. Uh, I grew up in California. When I was about 12 years old, my best friend's father um, was a musician, a blind musician named Wayne Siligo. And he's a really amazing musician. Uh, he's been voted teacher of the year a number of years here in California. And I, I was able to mow their lawn for guitar lessons. Mm-hmm. I ended up living with them at times through my troubled youth. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, that's, that's kind of how my music um, started was through my best friend's father. Tell me a little bit about your hockey career because uh, I'm a new hockey fan. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we have a farm team here uh, well, north of Austin. Uh, it's the Austin Stars. And I, okay. So we started going to those games, and I fell in love with it. And so I'm oh, that's excited that's... that I saw that you played hockey. Yeah, no, I mean, hockey is uh, was a big part of my life when I was young. I started at four and a half, and I was a big fan. Like uh, your team, the Dallas Stars, right? Mm-hmm. that that what used to be the minnesota north stars and i used to so i used to watch all the teams and, and at that time in california that no one was really into hockey that we did have a team in oakland called the seals the oakland seals but anyway i i started playing hockey it was full contact back then uh four and a half there was no you did wear masks but nowadays they don't allow them to check when they're young but man we would just get beat the heck up uh, and I played for a team in California called the uh, Tri Valley. Was the is the team in Dublin, California? We made it when I was about fifteen. We went to the state championships and we won, um, which was a big deal because Southern California kind of had the money and all the kids. Every time we would go to play them, we'd meet in Fresno, and they would just whoop everybody's butt. And so this one year when I was fifteen, we finally won state, and we were. In the final game, it was against, I think, West Covina. We were behind 2 nothing, And I scored one goal at the end of the first period. So we were 2-1. Second period, right at the beginning, I scored another goal. So we were 2-2. Went to the end of the game. And then we went into second period of overtime, sudden death overtime. They pulled their goalie. And I was able to just lob one down the, down the whole length of the ice. <laughs> so that's kind of... It really hasn't gotten better for me the rest of my life. I mean, that was the best moment. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Uh, that's a good memory, though. Yeah, it's a great memory. And also notice that you were a private investigator. Yeah, when I was around 25, I, I went, I was injured. I was a roofer, fell off a roof. Oh. My left ankle was shattered. They had to rebuild it with bone from my hip. But in that process, I met a pri- or my mo- mother knew a private investigator and had worked for him so I started training for him in Oakland his name was David Smothers he just recently passed and I did, ended up doing it for about 17 years got my license worked for an FBI agent here in San Francisco and did a lot of interesting cases but I uh, grew disillusioned with it over time I kind of it just didn't fit right with my who I am. I said, I'm a Pisces, man. I'm supposed to be sensitive and care about people. And it's kind of a job where you you get your orders and you kind of focus on that, you know. Tell me about the guys that you got to play in the band with you, because I noticed you got some pretty cool yeah. players there. 
I feel really lucky. Um, these guys, um, it started out with Liam Hart, who's the drummer, and he's played in a lot of bands, like Information Society is one that I mentioned, but and he also played, he went on, he did world tour with them and he did a world tour with some other bands. I can't think right now, but I played in a band with him where I played bass and it was a metal band with this guy named Roxy Roller. It's a whole, it was a, it was a little bit of a chaotic band. It wasn't the best band, but the, the lead singer threw him out and said, whatever, he threw him out. And I said, man, he's the heart of this band. What are you doing? And his name's Hart, Liam Hart. I said, man, he's, you know, so a little while later, fast forward, I started working on my own music and I ended up co contacting him and say, hey, you know, and so he jumped on board and then we, we had a couple of different bass players, a couple of different guitarists, but he ultimately pulled in a, a bass player that he had played with in a band here in San Francisco, I think like 30 years ago, they started, they're called Minus One, a, a sort of a skate punk band. And so he's got, and then the guitarist that we have, is, his name is Jason Rojek. The bass player is Mike Henry is his name. Um, but the guitarist, Jason, was also a guitarist that Liam had played with for about 20 years in some other bands. So it's really Liam's band that I was able to, you know, get to play with me. So I feel pretty lucky. And the other thing about the guitarist, um, we were volunteering in Oakland at Food Bank, um, for an organization that I volunteer for for about 10 years called Bread and Roses Presents. And we were, we were performing, um, I was performing as a duo and this guy came up to me and he said, hey, I like your songs. I said, thank you, you know, you play, yeah, yeah. So then we played again up with the Leafs and I saw him again and, or no, actually I went to rehearsal with the Leafs at Liam's and Jason was there and I said, I know you, you look familiar. You know, so it's weird how these things happen. Um, we ended up jamming with him. So it all kind of went in a circle. Got came back to these guys that I have right now. And originally you were just going to put out a single? Yes. Yeah, we were. Uh, we started working with um, a friend of ours named Stefan Franz. He has a media distribution company that kind of helps artists uh, DIY and so he was talking to us about a campaign and, and it was through another musician of mine, a friend of mine, Michael Vincent, who has a band, Michael Vincent, you know who. And um, so when I talked to Stefan about it, he said, yeah, if you have any other tracks, old tracks, recordings that you can add, it would be better if you could have something more than one than a one song single. And so when I went to the studio, started working with Trent Berry, he was able to to make it work so that we were able to do three tracks i noticed you had a good story about one of the songs and one i kind of really like on there is uh white wolf yeah that's um i love that story too and it's the great thing about it is it sounds like something i'd make up you know and and it's not and that's what i like um it was every story like i don't want to digress too much but this story was about my drummer, my former drummer named Dave Walsh. And when I met him in the music scene here about 10 years ago, he booked me to play a show. And I said, man, you look familiar. Like I know you. And, we, and he said the same thing. We couldn't figure it out what, what was going on. And so like maybe five years later, I got an opportunity to play inside San Quentin prison as a volunteer with Red and Roses Presents for the Day of Peace. So I grabbed Dave to be my drummer. So, and I'm coming back with Dave and Francesca Lee, a producer, and we're driving through the marina in San Francisco, the marina district. And I say, oh, I used to work at that liquor store right there. And Dave, my drummer says, me too. <laughs> and then it went off in my head. He had worked in the deli like in 1990. And I worked, so we were like, whoa. So that's the guy. He's also a, uh, a licensed hypnotherapist and a shamanic healer. And he's like really, uh, he's really an interesting guy. And so I ended up doing a meditation with him where or he did a meditation with me, a shamanic healing. And he's banging this drum and I'm laying down and he's talking to me through this. And, and I had this sort of a dream state where I, I met this white wolf and it was like a snow banked river 
and the wolf was there and I'm like hugging this wolf and we we're like, you know, we we're just buddies. And, and then he asked me like, what's this, do you, you might, you might hear a name or you might know. And it just came. I was like, Oshi, this is Oshi. And I don't know what Oshi means. I mean, I Googled it afterwards and there's like a DJ named Oshi, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was, it was amazing feeling that. And so he's, he said that that was my spirit animal. And so I kind of took it, took his word for it. Do you have any stories behind the other songs on the album? Yeah, um, Night Feel Good was a song that my best friend, whose father was the blind guitarist, mm -hmm. and I had worked on, and God, man, I, I don't even, I think I put a number somewhere. I'd said how long ago that was, but it was, a, it was decades ago. We, we had written a song called Healed, I'm Healed. And so the verses were actually that song. Um, and through the during uh, probably the last maybe two years ago is when I started reworking those lyrics. I was working on the chorus for "Night Feel Good" and and I just it just kind of came. I, sometimes that happens. I had another song called uh, "The Universe Is a Yes Machine" where that happened, where I'd written a story and then I'd written another song, and somehow I put them together. And so I was really I was thrilled to be able to to uh, put lyrics with my friend, my best friend from childhood to be able to say, Hey, this is a new song I'm releasing. Tony, his name's Tony Siligo. And he's a, he's a talented musician as well. Um, and um, so that one, that song, I really am proud that, that, that I was able to release it. And I liked the way it came out. Um, and then the other song on the EP grow is something that I started writing probably three years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, and it just came like a lot of songs where I don't know where it came from, but definitely it's like I was trying to be positive, trying. I mean, I, I don't think I sat down and said, I want to be positive. But as I was working on this song, I'm like, you know what you want to do. You know where you want to go with this. And so I'm really, I think like uh, working with Bread and Roses, uh, Bread and Roses Presents here in California, the, it's a nonprofit that brings music and entertainment to people that can't get out, like the hospitals, drug rehabs. Mm -hmm. I think through working with them, I kind of related, I kind of admire philanthropic ideas at least, you know, and that's what that song is kind of about. When you take your uh, inspiration from David Bowie and the cars and Jackson Brown, that's quite a combination. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, I know it's kind of all over the place. Um, I love singer songwriter and that's where the Jackson Brown comes through. I love the song, the song, uh, the pretender. Mm -hmm. I, I really connected to, when I was a PI and I was chasing people around doing surveillance and stuff. And I would hear that song and I was like, man, this song's haunting me, man. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and, um, and then the, the cars, I, I, my first band was a punk band and I played bass in a couple of punk bands. So, and then also I love country and I love how the cars, I mean, obviously they were really great at mixing um, country and sort of new age, new wave music. And um, of course, Bowie, when I was in one of my first bands, we used to do Ziggy Stardust and he's very inspirational for a lot of people, as I'm sure, you know, yeah, you've heard yeah. it before. I was actually watching a documentary about him last night. Really? Yeah. You know about, have you heard about a guy yeah, he got the name Ziggy Stardust from this guy called the legendary Stardust Cowboy. Oh, I didn't that, hear that. Yeah, he's out of Lubbock, Texas, and he still performs. I just performed with him. We just, the punk band I, I uh, play in is called Girls With Guns. We opened up for the legendary Stardust Cowboy in Oakland like two months ago, maybe three months ago. It was really interesting. That guy, if you if you ever have a second, Google the legendary Stardust Cowboy and you'll see Bowie admits like, man, I got, because he saw this guy perform. He comes out and he's, he has a song called Paralyzed and he's just crazy. He comes out and with guns, with blanks in it and he's just, he's a nut job. But I mean, he's really talented and interesting. <laughs> but but Bowie, was, Bowie was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever told you you kind of sound like the lead singer of the Smithereens? You know, no, but um, but when I was talking to the producer that I worked on this EP, Trent Berry, he he mentioned the Smithereens to me a couple times about possible directions for sound. So it's interesting. Yeah, I was listening to you, and I'm going, you know, he reminds me of someone. 
And then it dawned on me, God, it almost sounds like like the Smithereens. You can yeah, you could pull it off, man. I think you They're could. They're a great band. They were a great band. I know the um a friend of mine had some a couple records produced by the producer who produced the Smithereens. I can't think of his name right now, but he's a he's a um good producer. So is there anything else you like to do outside of music? Um exercise i you know i i kind of struggle with uh depression throughout my life and uh so exercise has kind of always been like a lifeline i say man got to go out and move around um yeah and, and like in the last six months i six months ago i quit drinking alcohol oh congratulations so, and, and that's kind of sometimes the moment where you either get two reactions you get like uh, one of these guys you know or but and i totally relate because but um but anyway so that's been kind of my new thing is kind of not drinking is kind of a thing it's like it's you're not doing something but it's like doing something <laughs> yeah and i've been feeling really good through that yeah amen i gave that up and i gave up the drugs so I'm, oh yeah I'm, I'm on your team here but wow that's great yeah no it, it's weird how in recovery i was at a show the other night we uh i don't know if you've heard of the band cracker it sounds familiar cracker. From the 90s, they were huge. They had a song called uh, Low, like being stone. Is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I was at the Cracker Show, and I was working with Bread and Roses, helping work the booth. We were taking donations. And a fellow singer-songwriter came over named Amy Penwell. And I was talking to her. I said, I saw you, you know. We, we played a show together. We were talking. And I mentioned that I quit drinking. And I said, you know. And she told me, she said, I've been at it 20 years. And, and she just started giving me all this insight. Like, you're going to see that. I said, man, it's weird that you came to me, that we're talking right now, how that happens. And, and you as well, you know, I, I'm able to say, I have this path that I'm going down and people come up at the right time and tell me certain things. And so I kind of, I kind of believe in that, that there's definitely a bigger, higher power and that people are involved. We're all, we're all part of it. Yeah, I believe the universe puts us all together for a reason. Me too. Well, I guess maybe that might have been one of the biggest hurdles you've ever had in your life, or is there anything else you've been through? Yeah, I mean, I fell off the roof, that one roof. Um, that was hard when they rebuilt my ankle. That kind of shocked my psyche about who I am and what I'm capable of. But, um, but yeah, definitely that the alcohol and the depression have been kind of a big hurdle. And I feel really good at this point. I kind of feel like I'm talking to you because I made a step, you know, I made a step in the right direction. Well, is there plans to do more music here soon and maybe get out on tour? Yeah, we uh, we definitely want to go on tour and we're hoping to go back in with Trent Berry at Hyde Street Studios in september that's that's our goal to go record some more and definitely want to tour I, I played in tennessee and i played all around northern california um in up in mendocino but i i want to get out there and see some more places and play and the band would love to so I, we can do it either way solo or a band but i'd love to go out with the band better make it out to austin yeah that would be great we'd love to come <laughs> see you i'll take you to the cathedral of junk if it's I still would. there I would love that. <laughs> Do you guys have a website? Yes, it's donovanplantmusic.com. And how about social media? Social media, we are the Leafs on Facebook, and I think it's facebook.com, Don Plant. And then on Instagram, I'm Donovan Plant, and we also have the Leafs 415, and Twitter is Donovan Plant as well. Wow. And YouTube, right? And YouTube. I forget all the links. Yes, I'm on YouTube, Donovan Plant. Yeah, put them all together on Linktree. That's what I did. That's the, the next thing I need to do, yeah. And Well, man, it's been a blast talking to you, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to some new music. I really enjoyed the album. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, I appreciate it. It's been a blast for me, too. Well, I highly recommend it to folks, especially, you know, if you like that kind of combination of music, you're really going to enjoy this. And uh, I am going to add all the links in the description. And if you would, can you send me the link to to the uh, the food bank charity? Uh, Bread and Roses presents. Bread and yes, Roses, I'll, yeah. send, I'll send it to you. 
Yeah, I'd like to add that in the description too. Awesome. Okay. All right. But man, it's been a blast. And I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, well, I hope you'll come back. Hit that subscribe button. For my regulars, you guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. So please like and share all those good things. And until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace.